Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Number One Crude Mistakes. And since we have some new people here that we haven't seen before, we'll do a quick introduction. So it's, it's Glenn uh, from Number One Projects, all the way from the UK. And then it's uh, KJ from uh, Crude But Efficient, all the way from uh, Sweden. And then it's myself, Håvard, from uh, Behind the Mistakes. So welcome. Um, Welcome. Welcome, guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a live recording with a live audience. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. It's a bit weird not staring into a screen every yes. Tuesday and then having live audiences and then having you present here. It's yeah. Yeah, we're staring out at people who are not talking back to us. Yeah. Nothing weird about that at all. <laughs> all right, good. So, uh, for those of us who don't uh, know us, uh, who are we? Glenn. So, I'm Glenn from Number One Projects from England. I built a workshop about two years ago and then thought it would be a good idea to start a YouTube channel where I'd make anything really um, musical instruments, tools, jigs. Yeah, I'll have a go at anything. So, yeah, that's where it started for me on Instagram, and then uh, I met these two lovely guys, KJ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all happenstance that we actually started all this, because, I mean, we're all on YouTube, and as Hobart said, uh, I'm from Sweden, and uh, I mean, the, the maker community is really spread out, and uh, I do whatever I feel like, and also, like Glenn thought, let's start a YouTube channel. And, and then I found other people all around the world, but it takes a, me, uh, a place like this to actually meet in, in real life. Because, I mean, this is the second time this weekend that we actually, all the three of us, are in the same place. Yeah. We've been talking for over a year now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, it, it, I mean, it's, for me, it feels weirder that we're actually in the same place rather than that we're on stage. Uh. I don't know, actually. After we... Um, we we all met all three of us together for the first time at uh, Maker Central this year. And it just seems, I know it doesn't happen very often, but it just seems completely natural now when we get together. It's just like meeting old friends. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's it's not, no picking up from where we left off. It's just, let's get in there. <laughs> it's all good. I, th I think it's the, it's the friendly banter in the Maker community that's, I mean, it's peak for me. Um, of course, as been presented here earlier, um, I have been taking stuff apart since I was a kid and, um, of course, struggling to put it back together again. And as you grew, um, you started to put things back together again out of necessity because you don't want to get caught having disassembled it. And at some point along the line, the transition went into, all right, I want to build things from scratch. and. Luckily, my parents had a workshop I could play around in, and I just did whatever I thought of. And of course, living in a small community, you became kind of the oddball that like, built strange contraptions. And then, relatively few years ago, I think it was during the pandemic, I thought like, all right, I'll just start making videos as well, because I think it's interesting to play around with cameras and audio. And yes, basically stumbled headfirst into the maker community and realized there is a lot of people out here who do the exact same thing. You have an idea, and how hard can that be? And you just stumble into your workshop and you start pulling parts. And it's an amazing community to be a part of. And of course, two weeks after you get to know someone, then you have a podcast together. Because although it feels that way, we don't go way back by any stretch of the word. No, no, I mean, two years ago, I didn't know that either of these guys existed. And then I think we started changing uh, uh, comments on videos. Com about two Comments years on videos, and I think follow on Instagram, maybe? Yeah, yeah something yeah. like yeah. that. And then we actually met at one and a half years ago at Maker Central. For the first time, you, you, 
You yeah. actually tapped me on the shoulder and said hi. I ambushed you. Yes. <laughs> and then we started talking, and you told me about Hovar. You should check out this weird Norwegian guy. He makes funny stuff. Okay, I'll check him out. And then things prolonged, and we thought about starting a podcast, and then we did that for about a year ago. Yeah. And yeah, then it took another half year until we actually met in real life. And now we're here on stage. So, I mean, the timeline is really quick and you don't need any. So that's it then. We've, we've made it. We're here. Yeah. So this is the <laughs> final show. No. <laughs> uh, no, no, you won't get uh, rid of us that easy. But what I want to say with that is there's no planning. There's no, no big thing. You don't really have to know anyone beforehand. You don't need to know anything beforehand, just try and do. I mean, we all just make it up as we go along. So, so any, anyone could do this. That's well, what I'm saying. Absolutely, definitely, yeah. And we do need more maker podcasts as well. So if anyone feel like, ooh, I would like to have a podcast, start one, find someone to talk to. Well, we have, we have a few of our listeners in the audience here. I think, you know, you, Ola, you should definitely start a, a podcast, and Martin, you should start a podcast, yeah? <laughs> and Roger, he's, he's prime for it there. You should, uh, you know, a few of you should get together and maybe think about having a chat weekly and see if it's worth recording. I mean, that's really great for the mental health part as well, to have someone to actually talk to on a regular basis. And we have to talk to each other every week if we're going to record a podcast. Because if we didn't have the podcast, then maybe, ah, well, we'll skip this week, and then we'll skip the next week, and then all of a sudden a year has gone by and we haven't talked to each other. But now we have to talk to each other every week. So that's, yeah, and that's that, really nice. And that's the weird thing about it, because myself, I'm a, a full-time procrastinator, uh, and of course, uh, an anxiety, uh, introvert, uh, whatever, so... I, chronically overthinking everything and then I just get a message out of the blue from Glenn uh, I haven't really spoken other than commenting on some videos here and there and just are you interested in starting a podcast sure <laughs> and I really surprised myself because that dictates that I should have been thinking about that back and forth for weeks and I just took that decision right there and then and haven't regretted it since and it's it's a part of that, just try it. And I think that's the, the major mentality from the maker community as well. I mean, how hard can it be has been mentioned several times today. And the, the people in the maker community, they are very much interested in the process. And it, it doesn't matter at what stage you are or what you're working with. Um, of course, I spent... Uh, this morning walking around here and, and looking at all the people, all the makers and what they're making and of course found myself standing by the booth of uh, people presenting cosplay. And I'm, I'm deeply fascinated of the, the craft of it and the materials and of course it's, it's probably just <laughs> uh, a question of time before I stumble into cosplay as well because they you have that eye, you see something, all right, I want to build a helmet, okay, what do I have? All right, so it, it's a bicycle hose, or I can use this for something. And I remember I had some screws laying somewhere, I can, I can use those. So I think it sparks the creativity seeing things and actually meeting other people that you can talk about these ideas with and they like not just brush it off like, oh, that's a weird idea, but yeah, that's a great idea. You could also do like this, and you could do like that, and yeah, that's a good idea. I know someone who has that. And you instantly get a bigger network of people, and you learn new skills all the time, and that is why I say to myself is I collect skills, uh, and that's just a bad excuse for filling my workshop up with tools. So yeah, I guess we are all in that club. We're running out of space to put our tools in, but... Yeah, you fill any space that you have, more yeah. or less. But I mean, the, the maker community is really great at being enablers for your sometimes bad decisions, but all, sometimes awesome decisions. Or, should I do this? Yes, you should. And here Buy are some it. people that could help you. Buy it all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's always your answer to everything. Yes, yeah. yes do it. You're, you're a very positive well, guy. Well, if, um, you know, if you, if you want at all, you should just always, you know, make space for it, shouldn't you? So you always can. You always fit it in somehow. 
Yeah, the problem is if you have to throw out another tool to make space for it. Yeah, but there's always that old tool that you don't use so much, which you <laughs> can put up in the loft until you know, a couple of years' time when you change your mind. Yeah, that, then the loft it can't be full from the given start. <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, mine's creaking a little now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that, that's a good aspect as well, uh, as Hans had here in the presentation before we came on, is like, buy your kids tools uh, and don't buy from TMU. Uh, and I've always said that, uh, not only with tools, but with like instruments. I mean, if, if your kids wants to play guitar, then buy them a proper guitar. I mean, if it's something they are interested in, then they have a decent instrument because there, there is nothing more demotivating than trying to learn a new skill on crappy tools. And if it doesn't work out, then you can always sell that guitar. It has resale value. But if you buy the cheapest, crappiest one, you're not going to get your money back, so you're going to create waste, uh, and you might kill the creativity of the one who wants to learn. So. Yeah, I, f I fully back that up. Buy proper tools. And my fault is not learning. I mean, I always ask these two, should I buy this? And even before I've said what it is, it's like, yes, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a, a 3D printer. And I see from last year and until now, I see a lot more Bamboo Lab 3D printers. And I'm not sure is that because I now have one, so I spot them out in the wild, or if it is a trend. Because I've seen a lot of 3D printed projects here and the capabilities that gives you. So I don't know, what, have you seen anything that caught your eye wandering around here today? A lot, I would say. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the only problem with Skaper Festival and as a thing is that everything is spread out and there's no easy roadmap. Like IKEA, you start here and you go all the way and look at all of the things and then you come out the other side. Uh, sad. This is you, you go in and then you have to go on a scavenger hunt after all the cool things and then you come out happy in the end. Um, so, I mean, everything on, on the top floor is, I mean, that's just a, a pick and mix of things. So that, there, that's definitely uh, where you can spend a lot of time. But the one thing, the, the one things that caught my mind most are on the middle floors here. I think that on the second floor, there, they have this marble maze thing that's laser cut that goes around a big cube and the aim is to make the marble take as long as possible to get to the end goal. That was really fascinating and I think it might be on this floor, uh, kind of hard remembering, it's a bit of a maze here, uh, there's some kind of music creation thing based on the game of life. So we put tokens on a screen and then the screen reads that out and converts that to music via Game of Life uh, programming. So it's, and you can also use your hand uh, to shadow the board and, and make music that way. So it's a bit like a Thurman, but a lot of programming. And it just, it was really calming just to stand there and making some music. So that's, that's definitely something that everyone should check out. And just beside that, it's a wonderful little sculpture of a digger filling uh, a lorry yeah, that that's then cool. tips it down into the hole again. So it's a nice Sisyphus <laughs> meaning of you dig a hole and then fill it back up again. And it's made wonderfully uh, scrappy with all the parts showing underneath as well. So that's definitely something to check out. And uh, don't forget to go outside uh, because that's the, the blacksmithing area and uh, the pancake bots are there. That's always fun with a a 3D printer made to squirt out pancake batter to make, to make shapes. That's awesome. And the, what's, what do we call The monster factory, where you can make puppets, I think, for shadow theater, perhaps. And they have big, awesome puppet things outside as well. So that's definitely worth a look. So, I mean, go and find all the weird cre uh, creaks and nooks and crannies, or whatever it's called, at this place. Because it's probably something hiding somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, then uh, sewing machine repairs. That's a really awesome uh, place as well, tucked far behind some place. Do you, they even have an old see-through sewing machine. You can see all the bits. That's, wow. I mean, that, I think that's really cool, at least. Cool. I want one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, in the, in the short time I've been in Norway, um, I only arrived last night, 
and at the festival I've just met really, really nice people and everybody on every stall has just been so really lovely and engaging and so eager to tell you, you know, what they're making and why they're making it. And then um, my, my favourite so far on the top floor, there's the guy that makes the guitar pedals, who we spoke about actually on the podcast before. Yeah. And his enthusiasm for what he does is just absolutely infectious. He's just such a really nice guy and tells you about it and then obviously tries to sell you one of his pedals. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my favourite so far is, um, I didn't catch his name unfortunately, but I will do before I leave, is the French guy who has made a completely electronic saxophone. Have you seen him yet? Oh, no, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. It, the saxophone itself doesn't make any music. It's all completely electronic and he's got lights in it and it, it plays really Blade Runner-esque music. It's so cool. Nice. Uh, it's such an awesome thing to do. He, I think he's said he'd been working on it for eight years. Sounds reasonable. Oh, that's, 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 that's the commitment, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't feel too bad now uh, working on my Hellcorder for three, three years. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Part-timer? Part <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> second version now as well? Yeah, second version, yeah. I'm planning on a third. Um, I, I think that really puts the finger on it. You, you, UKJ mentioned this place is like a maze and there's no structure to who's doing what, where, but it's also very hard to group makers uh, and I'm really glad that we have Skaper Festival, and uh, which the last couple of years has made it easier to explain to people what it is to be a maker. Because if someone asks you and you say you're a maker, and okay, what do you make? Uh, because we never have that answer ready, and we haven't really defined it because it's very hard to define. And I, I found it easier just to say, I'm a YouTuber, because then they, all right, okay, so you make weird stuff and film it. Yes, but it, it's... So, you're rich then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, inexperience and uh, cuts and scars, yes. Um, it, it's, not a, it's not a viable way of living, uh, at least not for my part, but it is a hobby. Um, Money is such a sad met metric as well. I mean, community is much better. I mean, I, in, I enjoy the YouTube thing and this podcasting thing. I mean, I would do it without the money, but if, if anybody wanted to give me money for doing it, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not against money, but I mean... It sounds to me like you are. I'll have your share. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we all do this because we want to do it. And I mean, that's the thing in the maker community, I think, that you should never force it and try to do things that you think that someone would like. You should always do what you want to do and then hope that there's an audience out there that will find it. Yeah. And that's the, that's the biggest realization about the maker community because if you see at least half the people here I, I met and know, and it's the same kind of people. So you can actually do what you want to do and there's actually people out there who is engaging in that and like, that's interesting might be dumb, but it's really interesting. <laughs> and they're just, just cheering you on and if they believe in the project or if they just would like to see how, how badly it can end up. I'm not <laughs> sure from time to time, but I mean, it's, it's nice. So, um, but what is, what is your latest projects? What, what, what have you finished last? The thing that I finished last was really quite boring. It was the, it was the piece of jet up for all the listeners uh, that already know about this. So yeah, I worked for, on one piece of, one slab of chestnut for six weeks, filling and sanding and filling and sanding, and then I did a little bit more filling and sanding and then finished it with a coat of varnish and then another coat of varnish. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it came out absolutely beautiful. And when it's in its new home with its two sinks in the bathroom, it's gonna be stunning. So, you know, that was worthwhile for that, worthwhile doing it for that. And, you know, I also got paid in beer, which always makes things slightly more worthwhile, doesn't it? <laughs> Getting paid in any way. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, but the latest thing is I'm on uh, Turgworks' uh, scrap wood build-off. So, yeah, I'm currently working on something for that. All right. Yeah. Slightly mysterious there, so we'll leave the details out. I yeah. think that's because I think it's going to look 
pretty cool and beautiful when it's done, but actually what it is, if I say it now, people aren't even going to look at the video. <laughs> you haven't decided yet, have you? <laughs> but it's going to be good. <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah, for me, I just finished uh, the welding station that I made and upgraded to the Triton Super Jaws uh, to make it actually work for, for welding instead. So I, I've actually finished uh, editing the video on the train over here. Uh, so now I just have to, uh, to upload it. And uh, the hotel Wi-Fi seemed a bit dodgy, so I'm, I'll, I'll wait till I get home instead. Um, so can we expect that one on Sunday evening then? Uh, perhaps. That depends on how tired I am. Uh, and if I come home Sunday evening or if it's gone over to Monday, because who knows with trains over here. Uh, so you might have to wait until Monday uh, okay. for that. Um, but uh, my next project, I have actually decided now, because uh, last time we talked about it, I was on the fence which of the myriads of projects I would go for. Uh, and now I have decided, and well, this might change, who knows, uh, but to make a kind of a robotic hand art piece thingy uh, out of old uh, uh, electrical equipment. Uh, and anyone who's got um, an image of that, that image is probably not what I'm going to do. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, because I realize now that the image I, I, I got myself was not what I'm going to do. But that doesn't matter. Um, I think what everybody wants to know is, will it have balls? No. Perhaps um, ball uh, joints, but... I'm not watching that then. Okay, yeah. <laughs> fine. T time, time will tell, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm at the same place on the timeline now. I have a video that I'm editing. Hopefully I'll have it out tomorrow. Um, I've been having a blast the last couple of weeks. Um, I just bought a, a, like a toy pedal tractor. Uh, and uh, earlier this year I bought an ATV for the kids. Um, that's my excuse, it was for me. I realized I was not uh, big enough to ride it, so I, I spent the last couple of weeks uh, merging those together uh, into a Mario Kart creation, uh, which uh, have, it have got some looks from the neighbors uh, when an adult man just uh, rides around on a motorized toy out in the street, but it's all good fun. Um, so I'm planning on having the last video out on that, and it, it marks the the line in the sand, because I have been working on another project, which we have briefly mentioned before on the podcast. It's a Christmas project. And, I, and as any maker, ooh, some servings, thank you. As, as any maker who makes stuff, no, and at least uh, try to sell it, uh, knows that, all right, Christmas is the time uh, to do that. but. Making takes planning and it takes time. So, of course, if you want to sell or make something Christmas-related, you should start in June, July. And it feels a bit weird working on Christmas-related stuff when you're sitting in shorts and T-shirt. Um, but that's almost what I have been doing because we re briefly mentioned one of my creation, which is the Hell Quarter. It's a, for those who don't know, it's a, a guitar amplifier, but using recorders. Uh, and I've been working on that for a few years, and I reached a stage where it's now, in quotation marks, playable. Uh, and pe <laughs> people have been requesting, we want to hear this, we want to hear that. And of course, it's always the, the issue of copyright, uh, but more so, it's like I, I couldn't be bothered learning all those songs that people would like to hear me play. So I thought, all right, maybe I should just make one specific song. And then, of course, why not make a Christmas song? And uh, making a song is hard enough on its own, but if it's going to be Christmassy, you, you have a very specific topic and you have a very set deadline. And uh, so I have been working on it and like, all right, should I do it? No, I can't make it in time. Then I had a couple of epiphanies and all right, th this is actually doable. And then, all right, no, maybe not. Uh, and then, of course, I went to that uh, stage that um, I asked someone for a collaboration. And, of course, you, you, you reach out that arm to someone, do, do you want to help me with this? And 
you're waiting for the reply and like two minutes later it's like hell yeah and it's like crap because there is no way out now so that's my next project um, we're making a Christmas song uh, I can't guarantee it will be out before Christmas um, but that's gonna be my focus for yeah, basically Monday and out. I need to focus on that. So I can't really go down to my workshop and do anything else because I get sidetracked very easily. But I, I have a copy of that song <laughs> performed by you, so I can guarantee it will be out for Christmas. <laughs> and possibly this evening if anybody wants a little preview. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the incentive that if you, do, you don't complete it, then Glenn will release the, the bootleg uh, demo track instead. Yeah, Obviously a little bit tweaked and edited. Obviously, and that's, that, that's what I love about you guys. It's that incentive, that little kick in the rear to, to, get, to, to get you out of your comfort zone. I mean... Uh, With blackmail? Uh, yeah, uh, of course. I only have myself to blame. I, I think uh, we were at Maker Central in Birmingham and we talked to Hans and he said it's, it would be cool if you could do the, like the podcast on Skaper Festivalen and all right, Okay, we'll discuss it. And I said, we should discuss if we would like to or the details. And then before we had that meeting, I just like sent a message to Hans and we'd be delighted to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes it's good having someone taking the decisions for yeah, you. I think I've been on revenge mode, uh, revenge mode ever since, haven't I? Yeah, yeah I, I feel I got, the, got my fair share of backlash <laughs> from that one. <laughs> it's, it's good to have some internal rivalry and some, some beefs. Yeah, definitely. I think um, the podcast for me as well, I think it works the same way for you. It really does incentivize you to keep making because yeah. you have to keep making so you've got something to talk about the following week, don't you? Yeah, and I mean, you are a bit nagging and complaining if I don't do anything or don't have made any progress. At least it, it feels like that for me. It's not nagging. <laughs> what is it then? It's, we just... We just want you to do well, KJ. We just, <laughs> we just care for you, mate. Mm. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> But th that being said, though, um, we, you, you mentioned the, the Scrapwood Challenge. Um, and I'm still on the fence if I got time to do it, reference to the Christmas project, but... Hello, this is KJ from the Editing Bay. In a couple of seconds, the main audio was lost for a minute, so we temporarily switched to a mobile recording from the audience. Thank you, Stian, for being our backup sound engineer. Not that you knew that you were it, but thanks. Last year we did uh, not a challenge, but we did a build along. We just launched a theme, and then everybody wanted to tag along. Um, could and the theme that time was make it nice, um, and we should do that again, shouldn't we? Sue, we have talked about yeah. that, so yeah. we should do another along. Any ideas? I don't know. Anybody Is else have any ideas? Anyone has an idea what, what should be the next uh, build along uh, project? And of course. Anyone raising their hands up is going to get roped into it, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you can, you can tell us tonight, I'll have a couple of beers. <laughs> have a fine carpentry furniture build off along. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so someone is playing the odds in his favour. Yeah. <laughs> doll, doll furniture, please. <laughs> We've heard about your dolls before, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that, you know. <laughs> An epoxy slab along. <laughs> epoxy slab along we get from the audience. <laughs> um, I don't think any one of us is interested in that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm quite fond of epoxy just lately. Yeah. Do you know what epoxy cost? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently filling up your workshop for a couple of weeks isn't that fun either. No, that's very, very true. Yeah. So then yeah. you need to build an, a special slab epoxy workshop to have some extension that you can do all that work in. Do you know what, KJ? That's a really, really good idea. I, I do need a workshop extension. Yeah. More tools, <laughs> more epoxy. <laughs> then, then the second question is, should, should we time it? And of course, I'm already on sidetracking myself here, but should we time it up until Christmas then? Like do, like do a Christmas event, Christmas theme? I feel like all the challenges of Christmas, as well as all the Instagram challenges and whatnot, happen all leading up to Christmas. I think yeah. January is a good time. Yeah, I mean, then we don't have the competition of a lot of uh, the mainstream YouTube, the, the ones that actually get paid for their weird things. I mean, they, they usually don't publish that much in January, February, because no, no one wants to put an ads on them. 
So then that's a, like a free space yeah. in time. You know, it's, it's after Christmas as well, isn't it? People are trying to lose weight, they're trying to stop drinking, they need something else to focus the mind. And don't spend that much money either. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have any money. True, yeah, yeah. Uh, fair point. Uh, Although, coming from the one who two minutes ago said uh, a little bit of competition wouldn't hurt, but yeah, <laughs> fine, fine. Uh, so, okay. January then, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. So we just need to come up with something to along to. Yeah. For then. That's plenty of time until then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a maker meetup later today uh, over... Uh, I got a great idea for an along, an instrument along. <laughs> <laughs> Playing your favorites again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm all, all on board. I have a, I have an instrument plan uh, yeah. um, coming along. The, the little brother or sister for the help quarter. Um, yeah. So Let yeah. me know when you want the video editing for that. Kjære yeah. publikum, oh. vi er mange som er på skapefestival i dag, og det gjør ja. at det er veldig viktig at alle med barnevogn plasserer barnevognene på barnevognparkeringene <laughs> i andre og første etasje. Or you could bring them over to the corner, one floor down, there's a guy called Justin, and he could make them into uh, something, a motor-powered uh, contraption. <laughs> so, uh, so then it's not a, a, a stroller, is that what it's called? Yeah, a stroller. Push chair? Yeah, push chair uh, yeah. anymore. So then it could be fine to put anywhere in the... Exactly. Yeah, as well. So yeah, yeah, you just have to sneak it by to the garage avenger and then you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a really nice stand as well. Yeah. This year. And it's nice to see uh, his creations in real life because they're generally quite big, I would say. You know, yeah, I, it's the sofa and all the all the motorized uh, death traps. I was kind of hoping that it would be a bit nicer outside, so you could maybe try some of them, but uh, may maybe not. At this uh, time of year, it feels... Mm. But, I mean, there are space out there to, to make, uh, like, a go-kart track. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's going to be a suggestion in the suggestion box from my side until next year. We'll have a small uh, Mario Kart uh, <laughs> track outside. We, I went to walk up the Opera House over the road earlier on today. That would be a good hill climbing stage, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, that's... Yeah. I mean, forget all that mud and stuff. Nice but, piece of architecture to climb up. I mean, they, they built it under the excuse, like, for the people. And I mean, we're the people, so yeah. I mean, you could just uh, drag <laughs> soapbox cars to the top and push them down as well. Yeah, nice soft landing at the bottom, isn't there, with all that water? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, it feels like a Red Bull event or something like that. <laughs> Might be done. Um, we, we actually had that in Norway many years ago. It was like a challenge, uh, like the Red, Box, uh, the, the Red Bull event. Uh, it was up in the old uh, ski flying stadium. And uh, when I went to school, we were like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to just use the school's workshop and build a creation and then we'll make a weekend out of it and we just travel down there and like enter the race. And um, we started planning it. Uh, we had evenings with beer and just all right, okay, we need to weld, we need wheels. And then just some one of us just went online and just Google it, when do we need to apply? And then, oh yeah, <laughs> they stopped that event 10 years ago. <laughs> and we were well into planning. So, uh, so then you need to start it up again. Yeah, but in the meantime, now, now you have the Red Bull uh, Soapbox Challenge in, in Norway as well. They have it here in Oslo and I think they have it in Bergen in a in real like, scenic environment. So I, I pitched that before, maybe we should uh, do a number one crude mistakes uh, soapbox car uh, race at some point. Definitely. What, what have you got in mind? Something serious and focused or something typically stupid that we would make? I, I th think having something seriously well built put together is a far stretch. So uh, <laughs> uh, maybe we should... Uh, Maybe that should be an along. Maybe we should just invite the makers and like, this is the parts we have. Uh, the race is in two days, go. That sounds like a good event. Very much so. I mean, the race is just the formality at the end. I mean, the, the process of actually having people over and trying to fix something together, that would yeah. be a blast. I mean, and you want something to do as well, a focus. Uh... Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, of course, during the race, you need a support team uh, or, <laughs> and someone 
And it turns no, out that everyone wants to be on the support team and none of them want to drive it. <laughs> I'll exactly. drive it. <laughs> All right, Good. it's done. Settle All right. <laughs> Now we got that on tape and we got uh, <laughs> some witnesses as well, so good, good. They, they don't look very reliable, these witnesses, I've got to say. Reliable enough. <laughs> <laughs> At least compared to us. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's, the, that's a nice cutoff of this episode then. Glenn tying himself to the mast, literally, and then <laughs> the rest of us just need to figure out okay. what that mast is going to be connected to. <laughs> Right, guys, get your thinking caps on. Yeah. <laughs> How do right. you want to see Glenn die? <laughs> <laughs> Hit us up afterwards and we'll, we'll find the, the most creative contraptions to make it happen. Yeah, very good. <laughs> that sounds uh, wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Uh, keeping one eye on the clock, I think that's a nice time to round it off, actually. It's, yeah. been, it's been a short but good one. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you go live. Yeah. In front of an audience. I'm, I'm just glad we could fill the time talking. I mean, we are the podcast of awkward silences, and but we just edit those out usually. Yeah, but I mean, the first awkward silence usually come around the 40-minute mark, so we're on the safe side of that this yeah. morning. True. <laughs> what do you say, just to keep things normal? Should we have a little pause and then say goodbye? <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop a festival. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>